Welcome to another kick-ass episode of the Midnight Reviews presented here by the Glasshouse Films. That's right, it's Carson with the glasses and the newly cut hair, and Adam with the sexiness. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, so Adam, what do you think of the Expendables movies thus far? It has a lot of names. That's it. You mean a lot of people in them with popular no, a names? Lot, yeah, a lot of a lot of big names. Okay. That's uh Well have have you seen the previous two? I have seen the first one. Okay, what'd you think of that one? I thought it was meh. Very meh. Very meh. A lot of build up, a lot of hoopla for nothing. Yeah. I mean I saw all those names and much like everyone else, I was like, Whoa, look at all those names. Yeah. It's gonna be a great film and then it was meh. Yeah. So that made it kind of not very great. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I have, I have very much the same feelings towards the first two Expendables movies. Is that... The things that make the movies that these guys come from so memorable is just how outlandish and ridiculous and fun they are. Right. And because with these, they're by themselves. Yeah. Well, not not just because... I mean, Tango and Cash was great, and that had Kurt right. Russell and Sly Stallone. Well, but it didn't have a cast of, you know, nine people who were all rock stars. Well, know? the other thing is is that those the, these Expendables movies are written with very plain stories. Yeah. Like, can you tell me anything about the stories that you've... Uh, well, okay. The, you've only seen the first one. The first can one. you? What can you tell me about that story? Um, they are expendable. <laughs> I don't we, okay, okay. Which is kind of funny because the second movie... Spoilers for the sec, for the like first ten minutes of the second but movie. Of course, and I haven't seen it. I don't care. Uh, spoilers for the first ten minutes for the for the impetus for the story okay. of the second go movie. Stop. Just go. Um, Chris Hemsworth's little brother gets killed, and everybody kind of goes berserk. They're like, "Oh, we gotta kill the guy who killed him!" Oh. Was it was it Mel Gibson? No. no, no. Mel Gibson's in this latest one. Oh, he's not in the earlier ones. No, no. Oh. Jean Claude Van Damme is the one that kills the young Hemsworth brother. Okay. The only reason I even remember that is because I'm a huge Jean-Claude Van Damme fan. Just yeah. like, yes! Time Cop? Are you kidding me? Alright. Okay, brief aside. If you haven't, you seriously need to see JCVD. It is a fantastic film. It's really out there as far as like what Jean-Claude Van Damme usually does for movies, but it's totally worth a watch. It's it's just kind of a awesome film. So Expendables 3. So yeah, we're trying not to even talk about the Expendables at this point. Anyway, yeah, you, you can't ever remember these movies. Nope. And which is interesting because the movies that the older crew of these mm -hmm. guys come from, a lot of them are very memorable, at least from the 80s and early 90s, because of just how ludicrous the plots were. Like Demolition Man. I remember everything about Demolition Man. Sure. Um, Die Hard and Die Hard 3. I remember so much about those movies. Okay. Arnold Schwarzenegger from his earlier movies. Total Recall. Quay. Or, or Terminator. Wasn't he also... Predator. In Predator, yeah. Commando. Like, I remember all of these movies. Yeah. Jason Statham to a lesser extent, but I remember Death Race he was pretty a well. Transporter, wasn't he? Yeah, I'm not a big fan of Transporter, but I really like Death Race a lot. Um, in the in the very underrated sequels, um, slash prequels. It's weird. Um, we're not gonna go through every name, are we? No, we're not. Okay. <laughs> because Terry Crews doesn't have anything. Yeah. There's a lot of names. Dolph Lundgren! I don't remember most of his films. This is a classic, um, just throw a bunch of names everybody knows into it, and then it makes a good movie. But part of the problem about this that I've seen with the previous two movies is the fact that they're in, that they make callbacks to their previous movies, but, like, okay... For instance, Climax, this isn't story spoilers, but just things that they say. Climax in The Expendables 2, 
uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger and Bruce Willis are in a car together, and they're like shooting at all the bad guys, mm -hmm. and they're just making they're making references and jokes, like mm -hmm. they like they're saying, "Oh, who do you think you are, Rambo?" And, and yeah, I think one of them even says like "Yippee ki yay, mother." Hmm. I, I'm like, really? Yeah, you're not allowed to do that. That's not what these movies are for. That that takes away the charm of them. But people loved it. <sighs> so now we are forced to. See you it. people watched these and asked for more. Damn you! Thank you. Damn you all to heck! All right. So yeah, what are your feels about the uh, third one? It's got a lot of names. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not looking forward to it. I just. I guess we got it. I think it's boring. I, it's gonna be action. It's gonna be boring action, and it's gonna be PG-13, so there's gonna be even more jittery camera. No, the raid too. No, unfortunate. How awesome would it be if somehow they mixed up the reels and we just got to watch the Raid 2 again? The Raid 3. Oh, pre-screening for the Raid 3. That'd be amazing. Anyways, I guess uh, we gotta go see this. <laughs> so our plan is to kick down the door and start spraying bullets. But bam. Come get him. This is the happiest moment of my life. Men. Woo! The Expendables 3. Ready PG-13. See it in theaters August 15. You know... As you saw in this video, we both did not have high expectations for this film. We were we were honestly dreading it. The only thing that's I guess worse than a bad movie is a boring movie. That's a carnal sin of film. If you craft a boring movie, you have failed as a filmmaker. Right. This was a boring movie. Explosions do not equal excitement. No. Which this film thought that, you know, thought it was that way. <laughs> so, alright, the plot of this thing is that Barney Ross and his crew are told to go take out this arms dealer. Turns out the arms dealer is a guy from Barney's past. And so then they, um, and for some reason he has to get rid of his whole team because he's like, everybody's going to die. Let's completely forget the fact that their name, the name of this entire company, of this entire it's franchise, expendable. the Expendables. Anyway, he gets rid of all of his team and he, and we spend what, like 30 minutes of this movie, Good 30 minutes, just finding a new team. Right. Of people that you know, if you haven't seen the trailer, or if you have seen the trailer, or if you just know the basics of film, are kidnapped. Like, they do a mission, like the blandest, most boring looking mission, mm -hmm. and then they're caught. Mm -hmm. And then the movie is him going, I'm, I'm, so, I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry to everyone. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We gotta fix this. And they all they reunite, reunite the band and charge back in. Yeah, they gotta work together. What a power of friendship! <laughs> Ugh. Okay. So, acting, acting, acting. Anyhow. Bad. Cross the ball. Okay, with one exception. One exception. That was Mel Gibson. And I know it's not a popular thing to say, but I, Mel Gibson was in a lot of movies I loved that I grew up with. He's also in a lot of bad movies. He's also in a lot of bad movies, but to be honest, 
if the rest of his career is gonna be playing over the top villains, I think I can deal with that. Yeah. Like, he, like none of his lines were really hilarious, but at the same, he had a couple of moments where I'm like, all right, all right. He was, he was he, okay. He was the only one that looked like he was even having fun. Right. So um, he was a crazy person. So. Yeah. Yeah. But everybody else I, was like, I don't even want to go through the marquee list. Every yeah, everybody else is just boring. Yeah, oh, holy crap! It just hit me. This plot is the same exact plot as The Expendables Two. Really? Yeah. At the uh, Expendables Two, they go in with a new guy. Okay. The new guy gets killed. Man. The rest of the movie is them getting revenge. Huh. It's the same movie! But Carson. Feel good, man. You gotta feel good. Work together. Uh, okay, Keep so. It. Movie was just. Uh, story, stupid. Acting, bad. Okay. okay. The sound in this? <laughs> I don't know if you noticed, but a lot of times. The sounds were, like, totally off from what was actually happening. Yeah, there were a couple times where I noticed that people were speaking and their mouths weren't moving. Not even in, like, an asynchronous uh, editing format, but just but it's, nobody cared. But it wasn't consistent enough to make me think it was the theater. It was yeah poorly done. Yeah. And, like, one time a punch happened, and then it cuts to the punch, and they get punched. It's like... Angering. It's little things, you know. Oh, oh, going back to the acting for a second. Um, I actually, I actually did like a little bit of Wesley Snipes. Okay. Like, but he wasn't in the movie enough. Same with Terry Crews. Terry Crews was not in this movie very often. Sure. That was disappointing. Anyway, anyway, yeah, sound awful. What what really strikes me as weird though. And this is this is something that really gets me. And and it wasn't like a one time thing, but it happened the entire movie. I think I know what you're talking. The CGI was weird. Terrible. It was weirdly terrible. Terrible. Like it was blatantly obvious. It, like the asylum productions have put out better CGI than this movie. It's like And for those of you that don't know, the asylum are the people that put together Sharknado. It's and whenever they green screened anything. Oh. Oh, awful. yeah. Like when the guy's climbing the cliff. It's like you can obviously tell that's a green screen. Even when they were driving in a car. Oh. When they, oh, that was even worse. Oh, my goodness. Dude, dude. Didn't you love how when he stirred up his little RC copter, how you could obviously tell that they didn't even bother trying to mask it? Like, it was it was just, the RC copter had been chroma keyed into the movie. It was terrible. It wasn't integrated. Like, the lighting on the copter was different than the lighting in the actual That's movie. That's how it was in everything, though. It was, oh. So I guess. <laughs> it was, okay, so CGI was terrible. Now, okay. So a lot of people, it's like, okay, we're not we're not going to go see these movies for for the plot. We're not going to see them for the CGI. We're going to see them for the action. Okay. Let me let me just break this down for you real quick. Yes, I am a complete cinema nerd. Yes, I do go to college for for movies. But I have a deep love for for action movies of the '80s. Like I grew up with stuff like The Running Man, Predator, uh, Commando. First Blood, First Blood Part 2. I grew up with these movies, alright? The action only works if you know how to pace it correctly. And if you just have a straight up 45 minute sequence of nothing but action explosions, uh, shooting, explosion shooting, fighting. it's gonna get boring after a while. Mm -hmm. It's gonna get to the point where you're just like, I don't even care. And Whatever. Like, it's different because in, for example, The Raid 2, which had a good 30, 40 minutes of straight action, that was paced in such a way that I was interested the whole time. Absolutely. But... You felt the stakes, like, it right. built up to that. Right. And in this one, 
it was like the ending thing that happens Ooh. was like oh let's just let's just tag this on there yeah you it's know. whatever yeah it's they could have taken that stupid. whole part out now one of the yeah it's the the action was just bad it and, okay before I get to before I lose track of this small thread um. If this movie didn't star the people that it starred, would people give as give it as much of a free pass? No. Yeah. No. Mm. No. They people would sit there and watch. I'm just throwing a name out there, Channing Tatum. He they would watch him scream something like "Get to the chopper," and they'd be like, they would just facepalm. So why is it that we give these guys a free pass to say those things? It's because they said them in the, their original 80s movies, Carson. Yeah, but That's that why. doesn't make them funny. They, but it, it makes them it being a in on the thing. joke, them being in on the joke doesn't make the joke work. Carson, it's a good movie. So, okay, so back back to the action. Um one of the things that is a personal pet peeve that really ruins a lot of movies for me is when they when the climax finally comes about mm -hmm. and then they split the climax off into like a bunch of different people doing different things okay like okay good example uh empire strikes back all of the two big plot threads of this movie converge on cloud in cloud city mm -hmm. And people meet up, they split off again, but you are highly invested in both sets of characters. Mm -hmm. You want them both to succeed. Mm -hmm. Bad example is um, uh, Phantom Menace, where you have three different action sequences happening at once, and because you keep cutting away from one to the other, you immediately kill all your tension immediately it's like oh wait now I gotta I gotta get more invested in this guy now that's bad even when the action is shot okay or pretty well but this is shot so bad that it that you just you don't care it's like wait who's fighting uh, uh, um, the only person that you could tell who it was was um uh, I can't even remember her name. Is the uh, the female expendable that they bring in? Which, by the way, can act very gorgeous woman. I gotta admit, she's actually very, very beautiful. But um, she could kick my ass any day of the week too. She actually looked pretty tough. But that's the only person that you could tell. Nobody, nobody had such a distinct fighting style or way they they attacked people that you got that they were a different person. Of course, people used knives instead of guns for like a second. It's like, oh, that's Christmas. Or, oh, that's Dr. Death. It, it, you didn't care. It was a boring movie. I almost fell asleep three different times. It was incredibly uh, boring. And I almost burst out in laughter at a couple of lines twice. The okay, so one of the big things that kind of that I was like, all right, you go, Mel Gibson, was um, you know what I'm talking about when the when the timer starts. Yeah. <laughs> that when, when the timer starts and there's that speech that the other guy gives, oh. <laughs> I'm like, I I was having the same reaction Mel Gibson was having, and I'm just like, yes, somebody gets it. <laughs> Um, I, I'm meaning to be very vague with this. I don't, don't want to give it away. Even though I don't like the movie, I won't spoil the movie. Um, but yeah, it's just... Uh, final thoughts, man? Everybody died. Everybody died. <laughs> and everybody died. And then they died. <laughs> but yeah, it was boring film. It just... It doesn't connect. I would not see this movie... I yeah I don't even recommend, recommend it for a rental. Not seeing it. Yeah, it, it's it's, it's not even good enough to rent for a dollar fifty at the Redbox. It's not even worth your time. Yeah. If it goes on to Netflix or yeah. Hulu, it don't waste your time. Just stick with the Golden Globus stuff of the eighties. There's yeah. nothing after the credits if you have the unfortunate 
Yeah, if you decide to stay, there's nothing again. after the credits. Um, uh, just stay away from this film. And then, the part that you hate. Uh. Go and go to the YouTube channel. YouTube.com slash Glass Films House. Like and subscribe. End. Like and sub... Like... And, and subscribe to the and, YouTube page, but and. also, also, like the page on Facebook, facebook.com slash glasshousefilms, and follow on Twitter, at glasshousefilms. Anything you want to add? You ended this, this, this episode, like, when I said end, right? No. Stay do? tuned, everybody.